This is Industry Relations, a podcast that's at the intersection of real estate and technology from an insider's perspective with Rob Hahn and Greg Robertson. So uh, let's let's get started. It's 11 a.m. You know, we said we would start the live stream. We don't obviously we don't really have like prepared anything <laughs> as you can tell we're wearing hats i'm unshaven <laughs> oh, right. this this was kind of uh i was actually in the middle of writing a post about the jury instructions because i thought it was interesting and in the middle of it, it's like the verdict is in like oh that's not good news actually i heard the first thing i heard was a source told me that the jury had come in like two hours into deliberation and was asking questions about damages and yeah, I'm like, that is time. not good news because the jury instructions damages is number five and you don't get there unless you answer one through four, you know, yes, for the plaintiffs. I was like, that's not good news. Um, but well, with them asking, I thought, you know, maybe they'll reduce it, et cetera. Nope. So uh, everyone on this channel obviously already knows, like the verdict is in, sits our VNAR, 1.785 billion awarded, finding for the plaintiffs, um shout out to jay uh you know getting it uh he had, he got that his tweet prediction was right on the two hours and yep thing and also shout out to uh ed zorn he had said it'd be about two billion yep and you know pretty damn close to that so uh but you know hey it isn't over right it ain't over until the fat lady sings so yep there's still an appeals process yep. There's a, uh, uh, no, let's get into some of that. All right. So first of all, though, as uh, Mud Puddle Stompers just pointed out, and Inman's reported this, that literally minutes after he won, uh, Catchmark filed another lawsuit <clears throat> against Compass, EXP, Redfin, Weikert, United Real Estate, Howard Hanna, and Douglas Elliman, along with NAR. Um, I mean... <laughs> It's the copycat lawsuits thing, you know, that we've been talking about for a while. Um, well, it's not even a copycat. I mean, it's the cat. The, the same cat. cat. Yeah. The same cat is, is, yeah, going. And, and, you know, like we talked about in a lot of our previous, fact of the matter is that uh, the all the four MLSs, all the realtor associations, every brokerage in Missouri basically is a co-conspirator. So they could be brought in, like, pretty much any time, you know, as far as I know. So let's but deal with one thing real quick. Right? So they fi I mean, I can file a lawsuit. Anybody can file a lawsuit. I mean, sure, so, yeah. sure, sure. Um, but one thing real quick, because you had mentioned this, uh, the damages are trebled automatically. Well, they're not, if they were automatic, then they would have posted that. I mean, for me, no, from no. my reading, it says the court may assign no. trebled images no so th this is something that i went back and forth with and i could share share with you guys real quick uh, why don't you first talk about what treble damages are so basically sherman antitrust act um it basically says that any damages are automatically trebled automatically triple no, and I, that I, that was something that no and here's the thing most treble damages lawsuits it's not automatic Sherman Antitrust Act is very specific. The legislation itself says damages are going to be tripled. So I'm reading from the Department of Justice website. Private plaintiffs in antitrust cases can seek monetary damages, which by law are trebled automatically. So the jury awarded one point, we'll call it one point eight billion, one point seven eight five. Okay. So it's automatically tripled. It's not judges doesn't they don't get to it's automatically tripled so it's 5.35 billion 6 billion or so roughly i mean it's yeah so basically at this point for all intents and purposes nar and keller williams are insolvent for all intents and purposes now they could settle like ed zorn pointed this out like you could settle after right and be like let's be realistic we don't have this kind of money we can't pay you let's settle this i mean that I'm sure that conversation is happening right now, right? I'm just pointing out that if if the judgment well, is you would, what you would think that is, if hmm? the plaintiffs were so ready to file a lawsuit this quickly, right? I mean, that's some preparation. I mean, NAR yeah. and the other defendants have got to come up with um, 
should have had their own contingency plans maybe beyond like we're going to just a, they've already got the appeal process started or you know they got 30 well, so, days according to ed right sure let's talk about that the issue is going to be damages in this case now like i said it's going to be almost six billion All right in fact hold on let me calculate this the I, joy I, of live stream 1.785 billion maybe there's a lawyer that can tell me this but i mean is it, i can't believe yeah okay so damages out of sitzer will be 5.35 billion dollars okay it costs automatic tripling right we haven't even dealt with injunctions the judge now gets to do an injunction <laughs> like say okay you know and then we we don't know what that's going to be yet so there will be more to talk about in the future Damages are five point three five billion. Now the issue is, I don't think NAR can appeal this now. Well, of course they can appeal it. Why? Why? Why not? Because in order to appeal in federal court, I've written about this. You need to post a bond. You need to post a, a right. what's called a supersedious appellate bond, and that bond has to cover the full amount of damages, plus interest, plus fees. Well, okay, but we went over this on the podcast with Ed Zorn, right? And he said the challenge there is that the the judge has to like come up with an amount that'll satisfy the plaintiff to like, okay, this hurts, but not enough where it's going to put the defendant in bankruptcy, right? So that that's that's going to that's going to be the, dude, it's it's the first time I've heard of bonding hearing like that. So I suppose that'll be next. I'm just saying, but. Normally, in order to do a, an appeal, you have to post the full amount of damages because the whole idea is while this appeal is going on, right, that the the defendants, you know, could end up losing a bunch of money and they're not in a position and the plaintiffs don't get to, you know, they're not protected. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, so, well, yeah, OK, so but as I think I've been saying, you've been well, I don't know if you've been saying, but I've been saying all along, this is going to get settled. Right. And. And, and we've talked about, there was sure. three points in the process where sure. to settle, right? The sure. first was before this happened, right? It may be yep. fucking Remax and uh, anywhere look like geniuses right now. Absolutely. They, they are such the big winners right now. It's crazy. Well, right now, again, this isn't over. The second part would be once the play, during the trial, when there was some, either the plaintiffs finished giving their, you know, their pitch or there was some egregious moment yep. they said, well, fuck this. We got to, you know, yep. let's get out of yep. our mess. And the third one would be before, you know, before the appeal process to kind of just get them out of this mess, right? Because um, so so if they- So we're down they, to number three now. We're now down to number three. Yeah, absolutely. We're down okay. to number three. We're down to number three. The <laughs> issue is going to be, I'm catch mark. I have $5.35 billion judgment, okay? And I know that NAR cannot appeal this. Well, they can't afford it. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, so no, no, no. The, the, again, what's the settlement? The right, so I, just, I have all the cards. Internal optimism. I have all right? the cards. Okay, let's uh, settle. Uh, so, what so, are we doing? So here's what happens: special assessment, right? We talked about this also. So, yeah. so it's like you're you're in a condo, you own a condo, and like they're going to put a new roof on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pay five hundred bucks. So NAR goes to their loyal membership, and they say, "Listen." We got to tack on um, a five hundred dollar assessment to each member during kind of the worst real estate market ever. But hey, <laughs> Time out. but here's the problem. Okay, problem. Here's the problem. That five point three five billion is Sitzer, just Missouri, Merle, the much bigger case, right? Well, that's why they have to, that's why they have to settle because that that would as we say you know uh they would expand the class so that everything would be settled they could try whatever i'm just saying now you have a verdict right now you have a verdict now the place like oh i won this which is why he immediately filed against compass cx the rest of the industry basically all the, everybody else with some money compass does compass have any money left i think somebody in the chat has said that they must have some right but here's the thing that still only covers those defendants and only in missouri remember what we were talking about is copycat lawsuits right and the example i like to use all the time is south carolina because no mls no association no brokerage anywhere in south carolina new mexico i mean tigo's on the on the line they're not covered in merle they're not part of this 
Every single plaintiff attorney now is going to get this big blast in their trade association email. Hey, Catchmark out of Missouri just won a $5 billion judgment. We're going to see some lawsuits getting filed in the next few weeks, man. We're going to see a fucking avalanche unless NAR goes to these lawyers and says, okay, we lost. Let's settle, right? Because they can't appeal this. Does that sound a part of it? Somebody tell me how they're going to appeal this because you got to post a bond. No one's going to write a $5 billion bond. Like the number of companies that could put up a $5 billion, $5.35 billion bond in the country, like I think I could count in one hand. Right? That's right, here's, one. right. Here's another thing. I, I just looked at like Zillow stock. That's that's down today. Like Of course. Six and six and three quarter percent. I mean, my expectation at this point is like Redfin, EXP, Compass, all the companies that have been sued will be settling immediately. Because one of the disadvantages <clears throat> for a lot of these companies was that Redfin they weren't so down, they couldn't settle. Redfin down nine percent. Right? That they couldn't they're gonna settle. They're all gonna settle immediately. If unless I mean unless you know, <laughs> unless they think they got some special thing, and none of them do, right? You know, I'm just I'm just thinking about my career choices right now. <laughs> um, let's look at some of the some of the comments and questions in the live stream. Um, let's see. Uh, sits or lawyers file. Yeah, they're so I uh, here's here's one Rob J asked why is co coaster up on this? I'll tell you why because Coastar's whole business plan really goes to sellers paying for listings on mm -hmm. um the on, on their site, not it being free from the MLS. So if 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 Zillow is charging if they're selling lease to buyer agents and that buyer agent compensation isn't like almost yeah. de facto guaranteed like it is now. Yeah, that's bad for Zillow, but it's good for CoStar. So for Rob J, that's the answer to that question. Is this yeah. is this is why I have a picture of of Andy Florence there, <laughs> Monty Burns, <laughs> going excellent, excellent. Um, do that again. I love doing this. This is why. That's right. Okay, so one question I, I see is, uh, if NAR can't appeal, what will motivate the plane to settle? They won, what's the incentive for the plane to settle? The incentive is that they can avoid the very long and messy bankruptcy process. Yeah. Right? Um, and if they could get NAR to cough up, you know, significant amounts of money, then th that's where they would settle. Um, but, <clears throat> again, the issue is if NAR... You can't settle Sitzer and still be open to Merle and all other copycat lawsuits that will be forthcoming now. So if NAR, for NAR to settle, they have to settle the entire country and just get rid of this problem. And I just, like, ooh, I don't know if they got the money, man. I don't know if all these hungry lawyers who will be now filing in all 50 states, right, who will be filing against anybody and everybody they could find, they only need to find a couple of some random, you know, named plaintiff who says, yeah, I paid too much, you know, when I sold my house last year or whatever, right? It's it's going to be really, really hard, I think, for NAR to settle. Right. And if they settle, whatever that amount is, okay, let's let's say they settle for what it, what it uh, Ed thought $2 billion, you know, would get it done. Let's say NAR does somehow manage to settle for $2 billion, right? You're saying NAR will then do some special assessment, yeah. $100 per and I'm like, yo, last I checked, the REMAX settlement and the Anywhere settlement both said we are no longer going to require NAR membership. Who the fuck is staying around to NAR to pay this extra extra fee? No, yeah, that's you're complaining two different things. They're all they, no, it's not. The vast majority are going to stay. Trust no, me. No, it's, it's not because like NAR for them to settle like that and they say we're going to do a special assessment. You people have to be around to pay the special assessment, right? Right. And I don't know that they're going to be around to pay special assessment. We got 1.6 um, million realtors, right? I mean, just sure. divided by, we. I mean, it's 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 uh, 1.8 billion. Oh, that's billion. Fuck. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But again, it's triple by law. So it's 5.35 billion. Well, I mean, the, 
but we think we was going to settle at 1.8, right? I'm sorry, I don't think my, my iPhone calculator doesn't go that high. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, Does this take out all KW franchisees? Could they regroup under different brands? Oh, let me show that. Oh, wow, you can show that. Cool, man. Yeah. Technology, yes. baby. Uh, does this take out all KW franchise? It, I mean, it it kind of does, right? I don't like KW is not on the hook for five point three billion dollars because joint and several liability. Their franchises are not protected, right? Remax yeah, still any work MLS. They'll pay the dues. This is a, another comment I got. Who will pay the dues? Realtors will. I mean, they, they still want access to MLS. They'll still pay the dues. Well, let, let's let's just deal with one question at a time. Okay, sorry. Does this take out KW and franchisees? I don't know. Uh, is the short answer, Robert? But you know, like I said, Remax and anywhere right now look like effing geniuses because all their franchises are covered. If I'm a KW franchisee and I'm like my national corporate parent is on the hook for five point three billion dollars. Uh, and I'm on the hook, maybe, as a co-conspirator. Why am I not breaking my franchise agreement, going to Remax, going to an anywhere company, and then daring KW sue me? You know what? Sue me. Yeah, that's another thing. I mean, let's. I mean, is is this a boon? Not because of the NAR stuff. Not because, sorry, of the of the dues thing. But is this a boon for other franchisors? For any basically for Remax and, and anywhere, do mm -hmm. agents start looking at them because they're covered? Hmm. I don't know if like agents aren't affected by this, but it's something I thought about in my last post about this. I'm like, okay, the issue is going to be the agents get a phone call from the local Remax franchise, right? Saying, hey, your broker's about to be out of business. Why don't you come join me? <laughs> you know, and I know this is going to happen, right? I mean, we're talking recruiting and retention. Like, that's all right. Uh, yeah, it's just, there's some really great comments here. Um, so, this is advantage of paying the assessment is you're included in a settlement and free from future lawsuits. Uh, you know what? I think if NAR could do a national settlement, that is true. The issue is could NAR do a national settlement? Right. Again, the amount of damages is. It's mind blowing. I mean, it's five billion from one state, and one state that's not even that expensive. I mean, just imagine what this amount is in New York. Imagine what the amount would be in California, right? It's one state. So I'm going okay now. That it's it's possible. So we'll see. Um, do, you think, do you think that? I mean, the only kind of national publicity this really got was that one op-ed in that wall street journal i mean this seems like i mean like abc news is gonna like well you know that's the headline here to me is like um yeah, yeah. now so, so like wall street journal did it right and then i think um uh bloomberg i think also had an op-ed about it but this news is so big that it's gonna hit every mainstream press right you think so i think so 1.8 billion dollar judgment that changes potentially changes the way well, I mean, i've thought it's been a big deal I, I i mean i'm with you but i mean I've, I'm, I've been shocked that they haven't really talked about it more in the mainstream press um you know as this is going on the, the mainstream press has no freaking idea of how real estate works they don't understand the mls they don't understand any of it i'm saying this is big news they're gonna go out and talk about whatever you know it's found that the NAR is a cartel and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, like that's the story they're going to run with. Right. So there's going to be some psychological yeah. and cultural and political changes, sociological changes going on, because now home sellers might be like, you know, I wait, I just heard on the news that uh, I don't got to pay a commission. Like that's going to be a whole thing. Right. And well, we're getting some questions. Um, Mitch Robertson says that uh, media will cover it now. I mean, he's he's been tied yeah. to that. So I. I I kind of if Mitch is saying I think, and then you're saying I think maybe we'll see it on ABC News tonight. Maybe. I have a question from someone that came in via text to me. Okay. Um, you can you can get on stream. Say hi. Hey. 
Hi, I got a question uh, via text from yeah. someone asking about brokerages um, removing the NAR requirement in their independent contractor agreements, like what that does for them, um, you know, things like that. So maybe that is a discussion you guys can have. Mm -hmm. or, uh, it, I don't know if it's come in from other questions uh, from other people as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll see what brokers, I mean, if you guys are brokers online, I'm curious what you think, you know, like given this. And like how many, um, and how many MLSs do you think will uh, now go to their boards and talk about breaking ties with the association? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's MLS access. It still comes down to MLS access. As long of course as it does. Saying, um, I'm just saying if, uh, if that's something that MLS is want to do and talk to their boards and their shareholders saying, Hey, uh, we'd love to make membership NAR membership a choice. And we'd like to have the MLS separate. It's not that simple, but yeah, I, I mean, I think they're all going to do it. Right. Like a lot. Hi, Stephanie Reed. Yeah. Simon. <laughs> As I just say, yeah. Uh, NAR is the nation's largest industry trade group. Begs national coverage. Not only that, NAR is a top five perennial, top five biggest lobbies in Washington D.C. Yeah. So this will absolutely get covered. I just can't believe we're here. I can't. I mean, I just never um, it, let it. I mean, yeah, you never believe. Like, I think what we recorded you're an just, episode. You're loving this, Rob, too. You and I recorded you're loving this too much. We're no longer going to go live because the verdict is in. And I think you told me. 65% chance NAR wins this. And I'm like, there's F there's no way they win this. It's per se, it's per se. It's the judge has already made up his mind. Um, and Robert's like just stoking your fire right here, bro. This is exactly what you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, I'm, get, I'm getting into crypto, Rob. I'm going to hey, crypto. Man, no Bitcoin. I'm a Bitcoin maxi. All right. Uh, mainstream press has no idea what realtors do. Neither apparently does anyone. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah. So again, Robert, he's right. MLS are about to get tagged into this with new losses. There's no question. Just because Catchmark hasn't filed against those MLSs doesn't mean that copycat lawyers will not. And I think they will. Right, because the MLS is the enforcement vehicle, supposedly. Again, what the jury found was that there's this conspiracy to keep prices high, to keep commissions high, and the MLS was the main enforcement vehicle. Of course, they're going to get brought in. Of course, they are. And once now, every let's put it this way: every MLS in Kansas City, in in uh, Missouri, and every local realtor association in Missouri are now looking at they may get hooked into five billion dollars in damages and antitrust damages are joint and several meaning if you are in the in then you're you owe all of it right just because one declares bank like okay you owe all of it it's going to be really really ugly right um let's see bankrupt uh, <laughs> yes, we saw. yep we just <laughs> mentioned it um so there's that. Okay. Here's what we don't know yet. Oh. What we don't know is the injunction. Right? <laughs> That's the thing we there's don't no know. There's no good news here, man. <laughs> of course there's no good news. Uh, hold on. So I want to bring this up because this was a question I saw. Um, ba -ba -ba. Da, da, da. What was it? it was something like how oh here we go all right here's a question from devin and dustin fox how quickly dc commission is being separated and the short answer is i don't know because we don't know what the injunction is all right and now that the jury's reached a verdict now the judge gets to issue an injunction some sort of injunctive relief in order nar and the defendants and whoever right for certain things the the what I've been calling the weak injunction is where the judge goes. You're no longer you're no longer going to require compensation in the MLS. But you can still offer it; it's optional, right? So it becomes Northwest MLS, etc. 
My thinking is I think this judge actually goes stronger. I think he probably bans it completely. I think he just says you, in fact, he might order NAR to say you will make it a code of ethics violation to offer compensation or to accept compensation. The reason why I say that is because the Department of Justice objected to the settlement in Nosilek that allowed things to be optional, right? I have no proof of any of this. I believe that the Department of Justice likely communicates with all the judges and their clerks, you know, that they, they're all lawyers, they all know each other, you know what I mean? And I think the judge and the clerks know that the Department of Justice has objected to no select. So if they were to come out with an injunction that allows for compensation to be around, that the, the DOJ will object to that. So why not just go the whole way and be like, you know what, no more, no more commission sharing. But that's complete speculation, uh, Devin and Dustin, because we don't know what the judge is going to say. But that's the next big shoe to drop in all of this. Um, Mike Simelson wants to, us to repeat why the... Well, I guess, yeah. Okay, so where, where's Mike? I'm looking for his comment. Please repeat why the co-star wins in this scenario. Ah, go ahead, Greg. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of, a lot of Zillow's... Revenue is predicated upon selling to buyer leads, right? Because there's always this, I mean, it's inherent that the buyer is going to get paid, right? So when this flips over to where there's a, a lot of more friction for a buyer agent to get paid, that hurts Zillow and some of the others that are re, that are requiring um, buyer leads. CoStar's model is completely different, right? They're, they're actually trying to get more of an Australian model where the seller of the home pays to enhance their listing on the site because it's, they have a your listing your 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 lead type of a model, not this selling to buyer buyer leads model. So this is, but like I said, <laughs> Andy Florence is the, is really winning right here. Yeah. Um, yep. Now there's an interesting question from Tina Merritt. How do the local and state association agreements work with NAR? Do the local state have individual liability? Or are they all stuck under NARs? It's a really good question. I think they probably have individual liability. Um, and the liability insurance they have through NAR does not cover antitrust damages. And I doubt that they're going to be able to find lawyers who are willing to defend them because you just lost. Like, what's the point? Why spend the money? You might as just settle now, right? Just, just bend over. I mean, I, I think it's going to be the message to local associations, <laughs> right? Because if I'm the insurance company, why the why do I want to waste money paying lawyers that I know are going to lose, right? Like we already lost once. Okay, so let's 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 turn this around, all right? Sure. Okay, so let's 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 go full optimistic, right? Sure. Right. So so here's what I think is going to happen, right? We're, it's it's like I've always said. It's like you know a lot of us are saying it's gonna get it's gonna get settled, right? NAR is gonna settle, right? Because they're gonna make they're just they're gonna settle. They have no gonna get it two billion, just like Ed Ed Zorn had predicted. Sure. They're gonna do a special assessment. This is gonna they're not gonna settle unless this covers everything. Sure. Right. So they get it to cover everything. NAR puts out a special assessment assessment saying, hey, the roof's leaky. We all got to pay and uh, we make some rules, which I think you and I both agree. I think more transparency in this industry is ac absolutely um, warranted mm -hmm. um, and we get on with our lives. This is nothing. This is, uh, you know, this is this will be uh, 45 days. We're, we're we're back to business with basically, I think, a better situation than we had. OK. So is that possible? I, it, anything's possible. That's as possible as all you may say. Anything's possible. Okay, all right. Okay. That's okay. Uh, anything's possible. I'm just trying to imagine Catchmark, right? <laughs> Who just filed another lawsuit. Like, and by the way, he'll be celebrating, like, he'll be ordering his private plane. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a $5 billion win. They're going to take 25% of that. They're going to then say, hey, uh, we're going to settle with NAR for the entire country. So including the Merle lawyers, including the Nosolek lawyers for $2 billion. So they'll take home, let's say, 25% of that. So $500 million between the three. Maybe. 
maybe. Now, if I'm the homeowner, here's the issue, right? The issue is, okay, I just heard, like, there's going to be this huge news, $5 billion settlement, refund to the consumer, you overpaid, and you're going to be, you owe $10,000. And then the settlement means you get, like, a coupon, right? You get, like, <laughs> a Starbucks gift card for five bucks. Lawyers take on $500 million. Like, I'm have not you saying, or your friends used talcum powder exactly any time in the last yet. six months? What's that? Have you or your friends used talcum powder in the right. last six months? It's, Please call this number now. Right. I'm not saying it won't happen. I'm saying like a lot has to line up, I suppose. Right. And ultimately it comes down to the lawyers being willing to, being willing to say, sure, we'll take two billion. And when the judgment is five billion. I mean, I, you know, I don't know, like, are they willing to take that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let, let's think about this, man. I've spent the last year, maybe two years traveling around the country, doing this in person, just talking about, Hey brokers, y'all need to prepare. Like y'all are out there just worrying about how do, how will your buyer agents get paid after this? I'm like, before that, you'd need to worry about whether you're still going to be like solvent, whether you're still be in business, because every single broker in the state of Missouri is on the hook for $5.35 billion. Just because you haven't been sued yet, you're a co-conspirator, right? You've been named that way. So, you know, now that now that the, the case is out, and it's shocking to me, it was what, just last year we went to the Las Vegas Realtors event and we asked, like, how many people here are following yeah, this? Nobody. And like 10% of the room raised our hand. So I guess now everyone's going to wake up and be like, holy fuck, what, what the hell, right? So I guess we'll see that, right? Um, Bring up Stephanie's uh, quote or uh, question. All right. So let's read it. Uh, Stephanie asks, so you're thinking settlement, not appeal, 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 and see if the Supreme sing an NAR song. <laughs> so Steph, I think you probably missed this. It was very, very early on when we talked about it. The issue is damages are going to be $5.3 billion. Let's call it 5.5, five, okay? For NAR to appeal this case, they have to post a bond. That's just federal appellate procedure appellate law. You have to post a bond that covers the entire amount of damages. You know? Well, it's not. Yeah. But I mean, it's they're going to try to make it doesn't matter. You're right. It doesn't. Fucking right. Matter. And they look like I'm sorry, NAR and KW and home services do not have five point five billion dollars to post that bond. So they can't appeal. Right. Uh, I don't think they can appeal now. Well, that, Zorn, that, goes when, for, that goes for Stephanie. That not, not only goes for NAR, but I mean, you think Compass? Do you think, I mean, a lot of these guys that nobody has this kind of money to, you know, um, I mean, it's not an appeal, but I mean, to fight this, right? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And the, no one's, and, and like, like uh, C2, you just mentioned, and we talked about it, right? Like the, the plaintiff, the catch mark literally filed like within five minutes. Like he's in the court anyway. He's just like filed it, you know? We're going to sue Compass, EXP, Redfin, Weicker, United Real Estate, Howard Hanna, Douglas Elliman, right? Every single one of those companies, in my opinion, will be settling. And I think they've been waiting for this, for them to get sued so that they can settle. Otherwise, what are you doing, right? What, like, what are you doing? Like right now, like honestly, the executive of the year has to be like Ryan Schneider and, and uh, Nick Bailey. Yeah, I mean, good lord. I mean, I mean, you're absolutely right. Jesus. Right. I, I mean, it's just going to be insane. Um, and we haven't even talked about that, you know. Uh, so I, I do want to address this because <clears throat> this is something that I think a lot of people think about. It's like, okay, well, you have to post a bond, but it's kind of like a bail bond, right? So you post ten percent. So for five hundred fifty million, Chico's then, bail bonds, of course. It's it's something like that. Unfortunately. Appellate bonds are not like bail bonds. Most appellate bonds require 100% collateral. Most of them. It's very rare that they won't have 100% collateral because the issue is that the bond company is on the hook if the appeal fails. And 
nobody's getting on the hook for five billion dollars. So it can be like the collateral. What that means is okay, you don't have to spend the money, right? You just have to give us collateral, you know, worth the full amount. And that's I I did a bunch of research on this. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe there's a lawyer who could talk about this. But I don't think anyone's going to offer NAR and KW and Home Services a bond for the appeal without them posting 100% collateral. And last I checked, NAR only had about a billion dollars in total assets. Total assets. That includes a real estate, includes like all kinds of shit, which is not going to get you know, credit the same as cash. I don't know if KW has that kind of money. Home services might because of Warren Buffett, but I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure that Warren is going to be like, yeah, sure, let me write a check for five billion. <laughs> you know, like I just don't know if he's willing to do that, right? So I don't. I actually think appeal is going to be real difficult, right? And we've talked about it, actually, Greg. You know, I said, look, I know NAR is like out there saying this will be years, no matter what happens, we're going to appeal it. And I've always just like, yeah, I, I get it, but can you afford the bond? And now that we have damages, it's five billion. I don't, I don't see you affording the bond. Yeah, I mean, it is really that bond. I mean, because you know, typically it would be the the, the thing would be appeal, appeal, appeal. But yeah, that's a lot of goddamn money. Yeah. All right. So Michael Simonson, assuming settlements by everyone else, is there a scenario where Greg's rosy interpretation plays out? <clears throat> yes. There's I mean, always there's, there's always, always a light. Of there's course. always a light. Of course, there's always a possibility. Right? There's always a possibility. Um I'm like I said, to me it's just all about how little are the lawyers willing to take. How much do you think now the uh, people settle in the moral suit? I mean, the, the, so the question, <clears throat> Sonny just asked, how fast do we think people settle the moral suit? <sighs> Who knows? <laughs> any, do you think there's any appetite from the moral plaintiff journey? But the moral, aren't they, sorry, Sonny, but aren't they waiting to see how this plays out? And it's not played out all the way, right? There's still another, there's the, the appeal, the appeal process. Well, we got 30 days, right, for them to kind of file something. And at that point, I, yeah. there could be a settlement talks. Could be. Could be. And I'm assuming they're doing settlement talks right now, right? Could be. It's always darkest right before it gets completely <laughs> <more. laughs> so Oh, Christian, you know. Oh, look. Um, I work in the Wall Street Journal, speaking of, like, mainstream media about this. Yeah. So I, I let me go back to Michael's question. I mean, there is a scenario, I guess, where Greg's interpretation plays out. But like I said, it all depends on whether the three main lawyers at this point, because, you know, copycat lawsuits have not yet been filed. So right now you just have to deal with the lawyers in Sitzer, in Merle, and in Nosilek. They've all agreed when it came, comes to Remax and anywhere. Like all three of them said, sure, we'll we'll settle with those two guys. Right. The big question is going to be the Merle lawyers, in my opinion, because they've already come out and said the damages from Merle, they, their own expert estimated at thirteen point five billion. Yeah, but I mean, what's I mean, if let's say this is successful with Sitzer, right? I mean, what's fucking left? What do you what what carcass are you picking? Right. There, there's no insurance. There's no anything there. So I mean, it's it's got to be. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I remember a while back, I just did like a back of the envelope math kind of thing. Like, what's the entire residential real estate industry, institutions, companies? So MLSs, associations, brokerages, franchises, right? What are all of them worth? And I came with a number of 40 billion because it's actually not that much. Most of the money, most of the wealth is in the hands of real estate agents, not in the hands of brokers, franchises, MLSs, right? And the agents have not been sued in any way. So if the total net the total value of all real estate companies is 40 billion, like you know, like what's the most that you could settle for? It's it's just I don't know. Right? I don't know. So, yeah, I think there is a scenario where 
uh, where there could be a rosy outcome like this, some some sort of global settlement. It just all depends on how little the I mean, language takes. And I go back to what I was saying before. It's like, I mean, first of all, you know, we're going after, a, you know, the average realtor is a 59-year-old woman, right? And this is the cause of such consternation that this, the government and everybody else have to go after this group of, of commission-only freaking people, right? That's just a, it own self. The goddamn real estate markets, you know, in the with affordability and interest rates are through the wazoo. And now you throw this, which is basically throwing gasoline on a fire. Somebody's got to step because, I mean, what, what, how, what else can happen here? Right. I mean, this is just, this is pandemonium here. Somebody's sure. got to step you, in. And, you tell me, who do you see stepping in? Mitch McConnell, I think. <laughs> <laughs> No. Do you think they'll have a whole governance overhaul in NAR? Somebody mentioned, somebody posted like this NAR conference would be a fun one. I'm like, I don't know. Now I'm kind of tempted to drive out to Anaheim and hang around the outside. Just real quick plug, having a party. Of the, it might be the last party. <laughs> <laughs> Monday the 13th, my place. Go to VendorLA.com for yeah. details. There's a lot of laughter because it's gallows humor. Like you kind of have to laugh, I think. Otherwise, um, yeah. Um, yeah, so, the, the, so that's my question, man. Who do you see stepping in? Right? It's, let's put it this way. It's not going to be the Department of Justice. It's not going to be the FTC. They would rather, they, they're looking to kill NAR. NAR is a very powerful lobby. Could they get Congress to do something here? It's possible. Well, what Congress? I mean, we don't even really, I mean, we're just, you know, too. Right. One week into having a new speaker over there, I mean, I have no goddamn clue what they're doing. Right now, but they they can't. They're they're going back and forth. They're dealing with like Israel, Ukraine, and all this. Like, are they really gonna find agreements like to save realtors? Possibly, but here's the thing: that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take an act of Congress at this point, right? And I don't see that happening. Okay, yep. so do we do a little money morning quarterbacking on who at KWNAR decided to go to trial? Well, it, it got to be Gary. Nothing happens over there unless Gary says so, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, yep. I think it was Kenny Purcell that told NAR to go to trial, honestly. You do? No. <laughs> Just <laughs> you can blame him for everything else. Why not this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tina Merritt, how do you think the DOJ FTC will respond, if at all? Look, I've already kind of posted on this. I think the DOJ and FTC are waiting to see what the injunction is from the judge. If Judge Boo comes out with a weak injunction, I think they'll respond. If it comes out with a really strong one, I think they just go along with it. Right? Um, let's see. Yeah, so... Richard Gibbon, in the end, it's all about value proposition for everyone, broker on the street, for the local AOR, for the MLS, for NAR, everyone that provide value in the market will pay for it. I'm completely agreed, right? Because one of the things I have been saying for a few years now is there's a scenario where ultimately this ends up being better for everybody, ultimately. Like we got to get through the storm, right? And there might be bankruptcies, there might be also restructuring, et cetera. But ultimately, I see a scenario where it's possible that like more experienced, better agents make more money. Right. Right. I mean, I do think that's a possibility. Like, look, I don't know, you know, those of us who are, who've been in the industry for such a long time, like, do we really love the buyer agency, the buyer commission system that we had set up where some guy who just got his license last week, right. Showed someone a house. And then they, he has a procuring cost claim for 3%. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't necessarily the greatest thing, right? Like, how long have we in the industry been complaining about, you know, like crappy agents? Like, raise the bar was like a huge thing because so many agents were finding that the agent on the other side had no fucking idea what they were doing. They're doing all the work, but they had to get half the commit. Like, that, was, that wasn't necessarily a great outcome for the industry itself. So... I think there's a scenario where this all ends up 
working out for everybody, right? Um, but you here's know, the, here's the uh, the headline from the Wall Street Journal: Jur- Jury finds realtors conspired to keep commissions high, awards nearly one point eight billion dollars in damages. Yeah, yeah. All right, so. Michael Simonson, let's talk about consequences for the consumer. Mike, do you want to come on the stream and do this? I'm, I'm trying to figure if I could invite you somehow. Uh, I don't know how to do it. Oh, hold on. Invite. Okay. Uh, Michael... No, so it's still down 5.6%. What does this do? I don't I don't what does star do? All right, hold on, Mike. I I just I mean, after the timing of this, everything else is just completely ridiculous. While I'm doing this, you want to start by opining on consequence for the consumer? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything major that's going to happen right away except that if this does get Main Street Press, um, you know, there's 1.6 million realtors out there. Everybody kind of knows either, you know, one degree or two degrees separation of somebody that's in real estate. So they're going to ask their friends that are in real estate, um, you know, see what's going to happen. They might even go, where's my money? And kind of look into, look into it a little bit deeper. Um, but it's going to have, it's going to cause you know, what you were saying before, Rob, when, you know, we, we did a Vegas thing together and you've been talking about this a lot. Well, I think now realtors are going to know what's going on. Yeah. If this yeah. hits ABC News and CNN and all that shit, they're really going to, they're, they're probably going to go, what's this all about? And they're going to be, I think we're going to see an awakening in the industry that we've been waiting for for a year and a half now or two years, right? So hopefully that'll be a positive thing. But as far as consumers, I it's just, it's, you know, It'll probably, you know, maybe make a, an agent's job. Again, I think this transparency is better, right? So this might cause a consumer to go to an, a, an agent like, so what's this about commissions high, right? So that's going to cause the mm-hmm. agent to kind of be have their have he or she's shit together to be able to answer these kind of uh, objections that they might be getting more of, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm curious. Uh, hopefully Mike can join us. And then uh, my, my take on impact for consumers, I'm going to hold off on that a little bit until I see what the injunction is. Right? If it's a weak injunction, if it's a compensation is still allowed, it's just not required, then I think it's going to be really bad for consumers, actually. I think what will end up happening is a shit ton of steering. I think it's going to be all kinds of private networks, all kinds of cool kids clubs. Um you know, I, I think it'll be really, really bad. But if it's the strong injunction that says you're no longer allowed to compensate buyer agents, then I think it could end up being pretty positive. Like I said, because then I think a lot of unprofessional, you know, inexperienced realtors either leave the industry or they're gonna have to charge less, right? Um, yeah, hey, Laura. Uh, yeah, you know, of course, Robert, NAR says they'll appeal. Like I said, post a bond. I, mean, of course I, want, to, I want to see you post a bond. Yeah. Right? I'm not saying they don't have the right to, but I'm just saying, can you afford it? Right? That becomes uh, the real question. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, so like, you know, so to me, what, what happens here, it's like, you know, what is the old, Chi- I mean, this is very, very cliche, but what's the old Chinese saying? It's like, or somebody said, uh, never let a good uh uh tragedy go you know un take a crisis go to waste yeah. yeah exactly i mean so this could up uh, this could upend i mean if you want to start a new mls or a new real estate or uh, real estate association and uh, you know a uh, a competition right to nar and and the the current structures of mls is out there i mean this this opens cracks that wide open because now you have these kind of black swan moments like, no, yeah. here we are, motherfuckers. This is what we were talking about, yeah. right? Maybe, maybe my uh, decenter property exchange is going to have a banner fucking yeah, because uh, this is the point I've been making. Like, hey, I can protect the compensation through auction model, but that's like th- this live stream is not about that necessarily, right? It's just Michael's is trying to figure out how to join. I think you just have to click it, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, all right, let's see. 
I mean, I think Ryan says consequent consumer real estate representation might have just gotten more expensive, not less. Cost versus value will end up hurting consumer in the long run. I'm, I don't see that, though. Depends on sort of the how the injunction is structured. And like I said, my belief is that the injunction will be structured strong. I think it will be you're no longer allowed to compensate. It's basically buyers pay your own agents, sellers pay your own own agents. Because, because the Department of Justice has already intervened in the no-select settlement, which allowed for optional, right? Um, so if it's that, then, you know, okay, sellers... Okay, here's, 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 here's a question. Here's a Okay, so the other thing I'm thinking of is like, I, well, I don't agree with you, like, that because the franchisors don't require their people to join NAR anymore right. or keep with NAR. If we go back to what what I what I could see maybe having more of an effect would be a assessment. I think if, if the assessment is like a five hundred bucks or more, that would cause I think a lot of agents to really go. Eh. Is this, I think that more than like the fact that you can leave or not leave, right? Might be, might be a material impact, but I don't think the other things. Um, of course it will. Look, I mean, I, I'll tell you one, man. I just found out, for example, like a week ago, that HAR does not require realtor membership, right? Surprise me. Because, you know, HAR used to be Houston Association of Realtors. They're like, no, you can have MLS only membership. It's the same cost. Okay, if I'm a Remax, if I'm a anywhere, why in the world, like, right? Now, if you are a realtor junkie, you love NAR and you, oh, great, join all you want, right? Everybody else would be like, I'm just going to join the MLS. Do you know what I mean? Okay, that's a competitive advantage for those guys. When Compass, EXP, you know, all, Redfin, all these guys said, well, Redfin's already said they, they, they don't want to be out of NAR. When all these guys say, yeah, we're out too, right? Like the MLSs that are requiring realtor membership, they're going to have some issues. The problem is for them to unravel that, mm -hmm. there are some issues, yeah. right? Like you look at the bylaws and you look at some of those things, it, it becomes a real thing. Um, you know, there was a, a good question, Jeff Corbett, what does it take to still allow buyer commission to be rolled into mortgage? Imagine this has to happen protect lower income consumers ability to retain rep. I mean all about that. The, the short answer what has to happen is new regulation, right? FHFA, I think it's uh no, it's a, what is it? Uh Federal Housing Finance Administration. So I think it is FHFA. Um they would have to change the rules to allow for something like this. They they haven't yet, right? Um will they? Seems likely, you know, possibly, but it hasn't happened yet. <clears throat> Yeah, that's the only thing I'll say about that. <clears throat> uh, scariest Halloween ever. Yeah, I know it is Halloween, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, let's see. Yeah, Florida also has a choice: realtor membership or MLS only. Yeah, so I imagine we're going to see realtor membership drop precipitously, right? You know, MLS membership is not going to change, but realtor membership will. But like I said, it's really, really difficult for some of the MLS to do that because the way they're structured. Um, like as an example, I know there are bylaw provisions I've seen where it says if the local association no longer owns the MLS, then all the assets or the local association is decertified, all of the assets of that association, including the MLS, belong to the state association. Like... A lot of MLS lawyers can be real busy the next few weeks, is all I could say about that. But you got to believe that they've game played this out, right? You know, there's some, there's some white board okay, the, the, uh, the attorneys for NAR, or, you know, let's leave the corporate defendants out of this. But, you know, okay, if it goes this way, we're going to do this. Just like the, the plaintiffs do. If it goes our way, we're going to immediately file more. Um, I, yeah. I mean, they should have settled. Jesus Christ, they should have just settled. I mean... <laughs> you were saying last week they're going to win, so of course you don't well, settle. After they didn't win. settle, I mean, I, I, I was thinking, okay, well, if they're not going to settle, which I, I've been saying they should settle, um, then maybe they, they got something there that I don't know, right? Maybe photographs or something. <laughs> <laughs> Video. Let's see. There's still a lot of questions uh, if they acquire... 
All right. So this this is an interesting question. Joseph uh, asks, if they require the compensation to be decoupled, do you think this will lead to more dual agency than ever before? In my opinion, that's terrible for the consumer. Um, and what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that's always a concern. I mean, especially with these models of like it's, you know, you know, fake agents they call them, right? You know, mm -hmm. they, uh, that type of thing. So I don't think it's a good, uh, you know, it's it's banned in certain states already. But no, I think uh, I don't think the rise of dual agency is a good thing, not at all. And I yeah, think this. Whereas I don't think the compensation will lead to more dual agency because dual agency is a matter of state license law, right? And some states allow for individual dual agency. Oh, there's Mike. Here we go. There he is. Um, let me finish this thought. So I don't know that it necessarily leads to more dual agency if they allow it. Um, but if it's completely banned, what I do see happening, quite frankly, are buyer agents going on an hourly basis. That's really what I see happening, you know. So, all right, Mike, welcome. You've figured out how to join the stream. Uh, give us your take. What's the consequence for consumers from this? Hello? There we go. There we are. There we are. Okay. I saw you texted me the link. I didn't know it was a text. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, so what's thanks take, for doing man? this. What's the consequence for consumers? Yeah, so here's what I'm thinking about, right? Like unintended consequences for consumers. You know, we talked about like, okay, so we save three percent on a buyer's commission, but um, what if there's uh, like, what if it becomes really hard to get a buyer's agent now? Right. What what happens to what happens to the, you know, to the consumer, like, or does it, you know, with people with, with, let's say CoStar wins and consolidates the listing experience like Australia, right? One private company owns the listings on the internet for the US, like, uh, or like, or like, what if it, what if it splinters the other direction? And suddenly there isn't a, you know, single source to go. You can't just go to your agent sure. and say, hey, what's for sale? Sure. Like one of the complaints right now is like, I, I paid my agent 3%, but I found the house. But of course, you can find the house because our system works so well that they're all available, right? Sure. So like, talk to me about what happens to the consumer in a world where we don't have any buyer's agents and maybe the whole, the whole technology infrastructure gets upset. Yeah, I mean, everybody's all these all the corporate defendants have been always looking for ways of uh, of uh, inventory enhancement or inventory in inventory uh, difference, right? And they've been trying to skirt around that forever. But I, I just don't think they realize if you just broke this all apart, and you know, you have to go to ten different places, eleven different places, whatever, to find out what's actually for sale or what got sold. What a fucking nightmare that's going to be. Sure. Um, and you know, and I, and I don't think the jury got that uh, got that understanding at all either, right? I don't know. It's just a shame that you couldn't be in there. It wasn't recorded, right? I mean, it's just you know, you, you, you know. I mean, good job for you know, uh, you know, Andrea to Inman and and Austin over there at Real Estate News, but um. Uh, I didn't see that housing wires to anybody, Mike. But you know, I guess you guys are still, you know, on the they, on the measure. housing wires on top of it, baby. <laughs> Mike, let, let me see if I understand what you're saying. Is the consumer impact will be they won't be able to find buyer agent representation, right? What if, like, I, I don't see happen. that happening. Yeah, right? I really don't because all right, there are 1.6 million realtors. Let's start there, right? Well, we all know statistically, roughly 15% of them do all the business. Like half the realtor members in any given MLS have zero transactions a year. Right. I think what ends up happening is we, we switch out of commissions and I think we go to hourly or flat rate for buyer agents. In other words, like some buyer would be like, hey, you know what? I want some help right, in buying a house, right? So I'm gonna go hire somebody and pay them a hundred bucks an hour. I see that because, again, one of the issues behind commissions, like, didn't really make sense for a buyer 
where the incentive for the buyer agents they get paid more the higher the price of the house like that never made sense right and i think if we go to an hourly rate there are gonna be plenty of people willing to do work you know but because but again they're not risking anymore now, around- now hold on, let me finish this thought though craig because one of the issues buyer agents has been they spend all this time money energy like trying to work with their client and at the last minute clients like i've just started to rent right if that goes away, I actually think being a buyer agent could be really attractive, right? I'm going to work with this buyer and I spent 20 hours, you know, just whatever, and I got paid two grand for my time. That could actually be really interesting, you know? Do you, do you think... But, but hold on, hold on. I mean, we've had these models around forever. Discount brokerages have been around. Redfin have put fucking billboards up all across the goddamn nation, you know, outlying 1%, Right. It's not, this is not like, you know, a new thing, but consumers don't want it, right? They want a trusted advisor. They're going to willing to pay, pay for it. You're mixing right? apples and oranges though, Greg, right? Yeah, of course, like 1%, but that's listing fee. We're talking about the buyer agent. And well, the you buyer, but, but, but in that same program, don't they like refund the buyer or something, right? I mean, it's still a discount either way. No, it, like they tried the whole buyer refund thing and it didn't really make that big a difference. We know that. But what so we free other, didn't make a difference. I well, mean, well, that's, that's the other thing we do know, though, right? Is that Trelora and Rex, when they went out and started offering nothing, like they got fucking crushed. We all know this. My point is, you can't. But, but Rex as, was a bunch of dicks. I mean, as, as an, fine, that's all fine. I'm just saying, as an agent, you can't go out and be like, I'm going to charge you 100 bucks an hour when the competitors are going to charge you nothing. I'm going to get paid when the deal closes. I'm saying, if that goes away and the buyer now has to pick between, I could hire Greg, who's going to charge me 3%, or I could hire Mike, who's going to charge me $100 an hour, right? Now they get to pick. I and I'm guessing that most buyers will go to hire an attorney hire to do that for you. What's right? that? You can probably hire an attorney to do that for you right now. An attorney to do what? To to be a representative when you're buying a piece of property. Maybe for the negotiate, but you're not gonna have the, the attorney's gonna have to drive you around and show you homes. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean there's such a difference on the buyer company. agents. So I want to make a point here. Buyer agents provide a lot of value, right? I mean, I've used a buyer agent every single time I bought a house, and it's like Hey, should we look at this neighborhood or that neighborhood? Should we look, you know? Now, I was lucky in that the buyer agents I've used have all been fucking great. You know, they were real professionals who knew their shit. You know, I had buyer agents who really knew, hey, this builder, you know, like the builder of this home, they did a really shitty job back, whatever, in the 70s when they built this thing versus this other builder did a great job buy this house instead. Like, like I'm not going to get that from an attorney, right? Buyer agents provide enormous value. Some do. The problem is all the ones that didn't provide value, they need to be out of the industry. I mean, can we all agree on that, right? Right. But I mean, like, you know, especially like in a, in a situation right now, one thing that's bigger, why I don't think this is an hourly thing. I mean, there's just not a lot of inventory. The buyer's agents got to, if they got somebody, needs, they, they got to hustle and dig and everything else. I don't think that's like $100 an hour job, man. Yeah, uh, look, I, I don't know, but here's some interesting thing. Ross uh, points out in the UK, only the Uber wealthy use buyer agents. The average home buyer just uses a listing agent for writing the offer. And I think in the UK, they do use a solicitor. They use a lawyer. You know, I, I do well, think there's, there's probably bans there, right? I mean, right now you can, there's like foreclosures, there's, you know, medium price homes, and then there's ultra luxury kind of stuff, right? So mm-hmm. I could see maybe there's, maybe there's pockets that open up for um you know this kind of model you're talking about but um as far as like volume you know it's all we always know all the luxury agents and all the luxury brokers is the one that really are doing the transactions that when you add up at the end of the day just dwarf everything else right so yeah. that, that that does it i don't see that changing a lot yeah so nah. rob so yeah. rob you know the the decision it, like it sounds like the you know the court's saying okay buyer agents are vastly overpaid uh right that's sort of the that's well, sort of it's, it's, what, it's not what, that they're, th- them themselves are overpaid it's just that commissions overall have been inflated because of well and certainly the consumer who's watching it from the sideline like you should my twitter feed right now is like hooray the agents right. are going down right that's like right. it's that's right it is unbelievable right that's right and and they so they like the then the question is like what happens if they say well 
we're not paying anymore, or like there's some structure where you suddenly don't pay, doesn't that mean like all the value of the buyer's agent starts to evaporate? And then, and then isn't that a scenario where suddenly like buying a home in the U S is dramatically more difficult or even more expensive, right? Because no, now you've got to like, yeah, it's it, it, great, great point. It's like, you know, it's a fuck around and find out situation, right? Okay. You're going to pay for the guy that's doing it. You know, I'll do $500 and I'll take and show you some homes and whatever, right? It's a flat fee. Well, what about this? Yeah, no, that's, that's the price of, uh, uh, you, know, you should have you should have looked into that. I would, I would <laughs> yeah. drive you around and do whatever, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's it, it could be a, a bad situation for for all that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just we'll, we'll see what the consequence impact is, though. Um, you know, I just want to want to da 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 again. Like you know, I I, I got we got to address this again because you know, look. Uh, Laura posted, NAR spokesperson Mantel Williams, you know, told him and trade group will appeal and ask for damage award to be reduced. And say maybe years before the case is resolved. Cool. NAR, can you show us how you're going to pay for a $5.35 billion bond? That, that, it's like, that. that's my one question. Can you show me how you're going to pay for that bond? And then we'll take you seriously. Otherwise, it's just a lot of talk, you know. Um, we, we talked about that. Uh, Here's the scenario. BlackRock invests six billion dollars into the National Association of Realtors. Mm. Hey, Rob, I can't believe I'm fucking predicting this, Rob. This is right up your alley, buddy. Love it. Okay, BlackRock takes over NAR. Okay. Well, I mean, right? I mean, you know, they, they need to get out of the situation, right? They just put two hundred fifty million into Redfin, which yeah, 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 talked yeah. about here on the murder board, right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so after BlackRock puts in $6 billion for this appeal and Merle comes down with $13.5 billion, which would be tripled, so that will be $45 billion. I mean, if BlackRock can afford it, do you see them putting in $45 billion? Well, I mean, well, hell, I don't know. It's private equity. They got more money than God, it seems like, right? But, I mean, like, look, you know, you play this out. I mean, they, they want to, um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go Rob Hahn here on you. Um, <laughs> they, you know, they want to buy. They want to, you know, buy all these homes, a big swath of homes. Somehow they get NAR. They own part of NAR, and then regular realtors become their minions to accomplish the goal of, you know. I'm just pointing out that 50 billion buys a lot of homes without having to buy NAR, right? So I do want to, this is really interesting. Listing agent may be able to convince sellers to pay 6% commission. Can't they now convince sellers to credit a buyer for their agent's compensation, whatever it may be? Yes, I do think that that's possible. But now it's different because the buyer has to write a check to the buyer agent. Can, can I just also point out a fact here? We've got Inman News, we've got Housing Wire, we've yes. got Real Estate News, yes. all here on one thing here. I mean, it's, we're bringing people we're together. We're a couple of random blocker, like random <laughs> podcasters. So thank you Welcome all, Creighton. Real Media. By the way, once again, shout out to Inman and to Real Estate News and Housing Wire for doing actual reporting from the court. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, da, 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 so many questions. So, so another question on the on the cost side for the buyer, right? So, uh, as a home buyer, now I uh, am faced with suddenly writing a check to even start searching for a home, right? To like, Potentially. right? I could, I could be faced with more costs to buy a home. Potentially. Yeah, and like, so if uh, if. Like, what does that mean to demand in an unaffordable market? Oh no, it's just it, it, it's it's like like I said, the timing is just the worst worst. Yeah, I mean, what what the government should do is immediately, you know, through that agency is saying, Dominus Ominous, you can now finance for you know your buyer's commission, right? I mean, that that should happen right away, um, just to kind of ease things a little bit because say, say that again, out. say that again, Greg. I mean, the, what the government should do is immediately say, you know, wave or put into place. And I forget, Rob had mentioned the actual agency that says e buyers are, are now able to finance commissions in the mortgage. In the mortgage. Roll yeah. that in that cost yeah. into the mortgage. Roll that in there. Just like, just, you know, wave the magic hand. Yeah. 
right now you can't do that you can't, do that. Uh, you yeah. can't roll that that financing in but could you imagine a scenario before that happens where suddenly i've got i'm a first time home buyer i've scraped together 10 grand for a down payment and it's going to cost me 5 to even shop for a house but here's the thing mike let's say in that home buyer right why not just go say i'm going to go unrepresented which is likely what's going to happen, right? Well, hold on. You always do that, which is likely going to happen. See how he does no, that? No, really. If, if I'm only like, like, what he says. 30, that's not 30, likely 30, going to happen. 30, You're 30, going to have 30, people who are going to walk in the biggest purchase of the life. I only have 10 grand, Greg, right? I'm doing a 3% down payment. Ten, that's all I've got, right? You're telling me that I'm going to say, you know what? Because I can't afford to pay an agent, I'm not going to buy a house. No, I'm just going to go direct to the agent. Like, listen, what's it going to be? Right. Let's say that happens. So the whole like they just go unrepresented, right? And they get screwed. They get screwed. Like that's the whole premise. They yeah, get screwed. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's screwed. How much could they get screwed? Well, there could be disclosures. They go in there and like you know the roof wasn't put on right. Nobody checked the permits. I mean, what any real good agent would do. All the different services they have, um, they pay too much. Right, because they didn't have somebody helping them out with like this. The comps don't add up on this, right? I mean, there's you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways that it could go wrong for sure. Uh, of course, there is. I, I guess the way I'm sort of thinking about it is, if such unrepresented buyers, what I see them doing is hiring a real estate attorney, which will cost them about fifteen hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Like they'll do all the work, they'll do the disclosure, whatever. Because fact of the matter is, you can't lie. Like disclosure, for, you know what I mean? Like state law protects as a seller or a listing agent. You're not allowed to just defraud the buyer. You know what I mean? So you still have to be relatively honest. Now you got to take advantage of the negotiation, etc. But if there's a real estate attorney, was like, time out, what this, that, and the other thing. And yeah, I mean, somebody's saying uh, hiring an attorney when they can't afford to hire an agent. Yeah, because an attorney might be like fifteen hundred dollars flat fee. Yeah, but there's that. That's one part of the process, right? Of As course, said, I'm not saying they're not going to get finding the house. I know up with a valid I, offer. I know. So, which is why my view is, I think they're going to go to a buyer agent who will be paid by the hour, because I can't really afford to spend a lot of money on fees, right? I need to make a down payment. So you know what? We're going to do all the work, but we hit this one place, and we need someone's opinion. Like, should we buy this house or that house? Let me call somebody with 30 years experience. Be like, look, I'll pay $300. Can you give me an opinion on what I should do here? <laughs> that seems more rational. Like that, that's just like rational economic behavior. I don't know. I mean, I don't think the pivot would happen that way because that person would be a pariah from every, every other agent out there, right? Who's trying to like, you know, like, you know, we got Sally over here offering 300 bucks to, you know, to do X, Y, Z, um, which is kind of, you know, threatening our, I don't know. I mean, you're probably right. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Uh, if sellers agree to pay buyers commission to attract buyers, they will do other things to attract buyers, right? I mean, yes, Stephanie. What, I, what I'm saying is like, look, this is entirely speculative because we don't know what the injunction is, right? And it's really critical. The next part of this, okay, we know the monetary damages. What will Judge Boo issue as an injunction? I think there's a scenario where Judge Boo issue a very strong injunction, right? And I wrote about this when I talked about affirmative uh, injunctions. Judge Boo could literally order NAR to create a code of ethics provision that makes it against the code of ethics to accept compensation from anyone who's not your client. So if the seller said, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna give the money to the buyer, right? To the client and the client to compensate, that, that's fine. But now the client at closing has to write a big ass check. That, that's how I think it's gonna play out. And if I'm that first time home buyer and I save the 10,000 and blah, blah, blah. And the, the seller says, listen, I'll give you $25,000 of closing, pay your buyer agent, I'd be like, wait, what? Do you know what I'm saying? Just think, imagine that buyer, right? I think that's going to change things quite a bit. I really do. But we'll see. I mean, it really depends on what the injunction is. 
Yeah, I mean, if you look at like the Wall Street Journal art, you know, the the headline, which is jury finds realtors conspire to keep commissions high, awards nearly eight point million damage. And then if you would add like now buyers will pay commission directly. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the headline. By the way, hey, Sean Blankenship, how are you? Um, <laughs> yeah, so no seller cannot pay the buyer agent directly that that would be I think that is what would get injuncted out like you can't you're not allowed to do that, you know. Um, and it's it, that there's whole bunch of reasons. Maybe we'll talk about that at some future episode. Um, so listen, um, we can just keep going on and on and on. You know? <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. I, I will. I do have to mention this. Don Fav says uh, NAR can't enforce a rule like they would have to come from each state licensing board. Um, Again, maybe. I mean, I don't know if state licensing boards get involved with compensation matters. All I'm saying is that I think Judge Boo could issue an injunction that says, and it will make it a code of ethics violation if you accept compensation from someone who's not your client. You know, like now maybe that's irrelevant because everyone will leave NAR and no one will care. So then he could issue an injunction ordering every MLS to make it where it becomes a violation of MLS policy to accept compensation for someone who's not your client. You know, who knows? Like judges could craft all kinds of crazy ass shit and then that could get appealed up and whatever. And like I said, the issue right now is the biggest issue right now for, for me is can NAR afford to appeal? Right. So let's try and wrap up because, again, yeah. we're like an hour and 20 minutes into this as an emergency podcast. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to keep talking about this. Uh, here's my. Here's my, uh, oh, well, hold on. Hold on. Breaking news. I just heard from a, a reader. NAR issued a statement saying they have the funds to post bond. Really? I'd like to see that because <laughs> it's $5.3 billion. I'd like three, to see three, three words, Rob. DocuSign. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right. Still trading on that. Still, still trading on that win. <laughs> All right. So wrapping up then, like I'll, I'll start with Mike because he's our guest. What are your three biggest takeaways from this verdict, from this conversation? So, so you know, as we've been talking, um, I actually have grown more uh, receptive to Greg's kind of rosy scenario that the market plays itself out. Um, that maybe there are some like big reorganizations that have to happen, like bankruptcy type things that have to happen. But, uh, but ultimately we like, I, I'm growing more receptive to the, uh, to that fact that maybe they, uh, maybe we just, we barely even notice it in at, at like as a, as from the consumer side, like maybe you barely even notice it. I've grown more receptive to that as we, as we've been chatting. Okay. Two other big takeaways. Um, the uh, I thought it was really interesting to watch uh, all the public real estate companies dip today and CoStar to rise on the news. Yep. CoStar is more of a commercial real estate uh, you know, play, but they're working hard in residential. And so .com, absolutely. Yeah. It would be, it'd be fascinating to see if, you know, one lawsuit against, you know, the, the, uh, the industry in general puts one private company in the driver's seat would be a wild outcome. It would be crazy. Yep. And, um, uh, and then I also, you know, think I've been thinking a lot about the, you know, the independent brokers, you know the small and independent. I think we lost uh, Mike. <laughs> are those the ones that really uh, are the ones that take the brunt of the the you know the impact here? Yeah. All right, Greg, your top three takeaways. Top three takeaways. Well, let's just go to the let's just go to the murder board here. All right. So, absolutely, you're right there, Mike. The co-star, the Death Star, has made a direct hit to Zillow. With the news of this right here so so andy florence is he's pretty happy right now of this kind of news here the six percent i don't know i think it's off the murder board i think it's off the murder board here so we'll have to see what goes on there but i will say i think in the end um i hope that the industry when nar gets out of this and everything's fine 
they can post bail, um, that they give them the credit that they deserve for actually, you know, doing the appeal, winning the appeal, getting whatever settlement they do. I just hope they get the uh, the credit they deserve for getting us all out of this because I still think it's going to be it's going to be settled or some way, and it's just going to continue on here. All right. Uh, my big takeaways, I guess, is I'm shocked at the speed of this verdict. I thought they would take at least a day, but holy crap, like two hours, two and a half hours. Um, I was a little surprised that the damages were the full 1.7, bit, whatever, 1.8 billion, right? Um, and my big takeaway now is, okay, you know what? NAR claims that they have the, the, the funds. I'd like to see that. Well, I think it's one, was it a full verdict? One point seven eight, not one point eight, Rob. I mean, one point seven eight five. Okay, triple five. damage makes it five point three five billion. And, you know, let's let's not get over the skis here. Okay, fine. You're, you're right. Um, there's going to be so many second and third order impacts from this. So many, and I don't. I think we've just started scratching the surface. And I've been writing about this since 2019, and I don't think that I've really gone everywhere second and third order impact right like and we've mentioned a bunch of them right now remax and anywhere are about to have i think the best like franchise sales quarter in their history if you're a franchise sales rep for either of those guys it's their like, fucking history right wow. call the marketing department now I, right. I think compass call esp me. all these guys they call should be set up like within the month like before I, before Thanksgiving, because uh, why bother? Why fucking bother, right? And what it does then is it creates this massive weird pressure, in my opinion. All the brokers, all the brands that could settle and did will be alive. Everyone didn't are going to be like, what the fuck? You know, uh, I think there's going to be some real second or third order impact to this. Impact on MLS, local MLS, local associates, we haven't seen that yet. I can, I can almost certainly guarantee it's coming because why put them in as co-conspirators if you're not going to go after them, All right? The the debates, the the arguments, the the discussions. I don't I don't know that I'd want to be in a MLS or Realtor Association boardroom for the next month or two, right? Because those can be tough. I I think the NAR conference is going to be probably the most significant NAR national convention we've seen. Um, maybe in a few decades, right? Maybe in a few decades. Again, I can't imagine what that's going to be like. The MLS policy committee meeting at NAR, I can't even imagine what that's going to be like, be right? Because think about the things that they're going to have to deal with. Well, when so, you add on, I mean, um, on that, when you add on what's been going on at NAR anyway, this is not good news at all, right? This no. is adding, this is adding fuel to the fire of all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, and I think finger pointing is going to start like almost instantly, right? Um, so th again, there's second and third or fourth order impacts that we haven't even considered, but there's a lot. But look, I, we can say this. We've been waiting for this date since 2019, and at least we now have a verdict, right? Maybe NR can afford the appeals bond. Maybe they appeal it. Maybe they win on appeal. We do have a verdict. So my fourth big takeaway is every single brokerage, every single franchise, every single realtor, every not realtor, every single realtor association, MLS, y'all need to think about copycat lawsuits because I can almost guarantee that every plaintiff's law firm of any size is firing up their printer right now to see if they could get a piece of this action. This is such a big giant award they're going to do this. So I would say uh, call your lawyer, call your insurance company, call your advisors, call your consultants, call your accountants. You, you, you got to get ready. So let's yep. wrap there because we could keep going for hours and hours, but obviously more news is coming as we speak. All right. Guys, thanks for inviting me on. Yeah. Okay. Doing on. It. Thanks everybody for, for joining us for this uh, last minute emergency thing. And, Greg, you clearly need to take a high-resolution photo of the murder board and, and put it out there for people to, to see. <laughs> Amazing. All right. I'll put it on Blender Alley right now. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye.
Listen, content is everything. Two Brothers Creative makes it look easy. Right now, business owners really only have two options. The first option is hire a big firm. Now, this big firm's gonna come in, make you think that they invented all the algorithms and start charging you thousands of dollars every month. You don't wanna do that. Second option is to do it yourself. Well, that means you gotta learn SEO, SEM, copywriting, marketing techniques on the web. Ugh, you should be really focusing on your own product. But now there's a third option. It's called content in a box. Give Two Brothers Creative 30 minutes a week and they'll handle everything. Plus, they'll show you how to bring it in-house later on. They'll rebuild your marketing foundation and give you tools and techniques and a new marketing playbook that'll actually produce real results and help you grow your business. Two Brothers Creative will give you the confidence and know-how to tell the SEOs and SEMs and all those other acronyms to get fucked. You're in control now. Get started today at thecontentbox.com.